So good. All you beautiful souls out there, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be doing this video. One, because it's been like over a month since I posted a video and you know, that's not cool. You can't just be like, I feel like I left you guys. And somebody was like, miss you. And I was like, really? Like that made me feel good because it's like, there's a billion people on YouTube and you kind of feel like, you know, you get up motivated sometimes and if you don't make a video, you're kind of like, ah, oh, whatever, nobody notices. But for somebody to say, hey, we miss you, we miss your videos. That's like, you know what? I'm gonna make a video. I'm back on here and I'm excited to be back. I didn't go anywhere. It's just, I took a little break because of some news some news that I got coming up see I don't know if I'm gonna post the news before or after this video so I have to be safe I wanted to come at you with something a little light today let's have some fun today I'm in a good mood it's nice outside uh, my neighborhood is acting crazy because you know how it is in the city when it starts to get warm outside everybody want to get their cars out and blast their music and beat their horns and act a fool so if you hear all of that going on outside of the window do not be alarmed. I live in Philadelphia. Let's get to it. So, first of all, can we please just have a moment of silence for the fact that I'm gonna be 32 this year? Let's just, let's just grieve my 20s for a moment. that's over I'm coming at you guys today with a list of things that I would at my 32 years of age or almost 32 I'll be 32 in September um, age would have told my 20 year old self now if y'all could if you could go back at 30 something years old 35 40 however old you are and tell your 20 something year old something, what would it be? These are the top 10, and I have a few bonus items, that I would tell my 20 something year old self. And I just thought it was interesting. I wrote down my list, and we gonna get to it. Uh, and you know, I have daughters, so I wanna make sure that I'm teaching my kids the right stuff. I want to make sure that they don't go through the same stupid stuff that I went through in my 20s, even though they probably will. And if they don't, they'll go through something else ridiculous that will break my heart, I'm sure. But, you know, we live for Jesus and we want to exercise wisdom in this here day and age where the world is going absolutely insane and we're all trying to shelter our kids from it. But you got to admit, in our 20s, we think that we know everything. We don't know jack nothing. And even in our 30s, we're still trying to figure it out. Some of us, most of us. I don't know about you, but in my 30s, I'm still trying to figure it out. This whole life thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, Jesus, God, we got that thing on lock. We know we solid in our face. We know Jesus is Lord. When we leave this earth, we go into glory to be with him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for, for salvation being sealed, for our fate being sealed. Because if you don't have that, that's a whole nother ball game. And I live that life too. But that's not what this video is about. 
I'm talking about your fate is sealed with Jesus and now you're just kind of like, okay, now what? You know what I'm saying? So, and that is not what this video is about, but that's a good video. Let's talk, we're gonna talk about that one day. But today, we're gonna do 20 things. Oh no, that's what I wrote down, but I didn't actually write 20. 10 things that I would have told my 20 something year old self. Number one, now these are not in any particular order. Okay, let's get to it. These are not in any in particular order. I just was kind of writing them out, but you know, God works through you the holy spirit works through you so who knows as i was writing them it could have been but i'm just saying like yeah okay number one it's not that serious number one to my 21 year old self or 20 year old self in my 20s is when i got married i got married at 22 I started having children. I had my first baby at 23, Brooklyn. And that's when life really started to pick up for me. So everything was like super serious. Like, first of all, no, we're married now. Life is super serious. We are having children now. This is super serious. We need to get our life together ASAP. I need to have my house, my car, my career all within the next nine months before this baby comes and I need you husband to make it all happen and that's the bottom line because this is just gotten super serious so but that perspective really made me just worry about everything and I didn't enjoy my pregnancy um, I had a hard time enjoying my husband and you know this is advice that can go to anybody who it's just beginning to go through these these things. I just so happen to go through these things in my 20s. But a lot of times you are oblivious to those life circumstances until you actually go through them. So now having been on the other side of being married for eight years now and having had children, I have three and secret, secret. Um, now I can say it's not that serious. Like everything that is supposed to happen is going to happen it's all going to be for your greater good it's all going to come together in the end um eventually <laughs> and yeah it's just don't sweat the small stuff and don't be so scared about everything now it's hard especially when you're first having a baby it's hard not to be scared it's hard not to be scared walking into a new marriage it's it's hard i'm not saying don't feel fear I'm saying don't live based off of those fears because that is what's going to ruin the experience for you. So, number two. Now, this is funny. <laughs> number number one is it's not that serious, right? Number two. It's super serious. I know you guys are probably like, come on, Amanda. you playing around too much. Why do I say that? the other half of me like half of me took it so seriously that i worried about everything but the other half of me didn't take it serious enough so i just worried and didn't do anything about it now let me not say that i did something about it but it was all sporadic and based on fear it was all like when you know it's not that serious everything is going to come together god's got our life when you're trusting in the Lord, come on now, let's talk about it, y'all. When we are trusting in God, you understand that it's ser it's not so serious that I have to take control of everything because God's got me, but it's serious enough that I need to take, I need to be wise about my life. I need to take strategic actions. I need to remain close to God. I need to remain in um the things are that are gonna benefit me in the long run now these are all things that your parents tell you and you like Psh, whatever i'm in my 20s i'm gonna party i'm gonna live it up i'm going yolo and yeah that's all cool but when i look back now and it's not so much mistakes that i made because i didn't make any really major mistakes um when i look back on my life i'm really happy with most of the choices that i made most 
because we all got some stuff that we'd be like, mm, I would have did that differently, girl. But when I look back, I wish I would have taken some things a little bit more seriously. I wish I would have um, really buckled down in some areas of my life where I see now uh, my classmates or other people who did take those periods of their life more seriously um, saw the benefits later on. I was very much like here and now and not really thinking about the future until something dramatic happened like a pregnancy or you know. So number one, it's not that serious, but number two, it is serious. It's serious enough, this is your life. Life is short, you only get one. Make good decisions. Um, you know, just keep, keep your eyes on the prize, which is Jesus. Oh, and I, I said don't waste your time caring about things that aren't going to matter in 10 years. Your 20s is when you're like still trying to find out who you are. So a fight with a friend can like torment your mind for three days. A breakup, a breakup with a boyfriend can like send you into a depression in your 20s. I mean it can at any age, but in your 20s is when you're really vulnerable to your emotions. Number three is dump him, he's not worth it. Girl, if I could go back to my 20s and t and like remove three out of seven, I don't know, of the relationships that I had, like I'm talking about boyfriend-girlfriend relationships, I would tell myself, girl, he ain't worth it. You're worth so much more. Move on. Now, I did meet my husband when I was 21 or 22. No, I was... 20 actually when I met my husband yes I met my husband when I was 20 so I guess I mean in my it, that would be like in my younger age but 20 year old women in your 20s and even in your 30s as you get older knowing your worth is so important and that's why I'm glad that like in this generation social media can be negative in terms of the comparison game but I love that this generation is very much in tune, especially the women, very much in tune to self-worth. How much you're worth to God, how much he loves you, how much he wants the best for you, and not in a way that keeps you, um, not in a prideful way that keeps you feeling like you're above everyone else, but just knowing to not settle for less than what God's best for you is. So number three would definitely be dump him he's not worth it now there are definitely life lessons that i learned from being in certain relationships that's why i said i don't feel like i made too many mistakes in my past but i would say that if i were a little bit more serious number two about my life in the future i probably wouldn't have dated half the guys that i dated because they weren't that great so number four number four some of y'all are not going to agree with but this is what i would tell my 20 something year old self number four would be college is not for you girl follow your dreams now i know some of you are going to be like oh no college is something that you should do blah 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 me personally education in that form is not my thing I would have loved to say I graduated and got my degree and went on to this great career but that was not the case for me I was very much a creative I was very much a um, a like step outside of the box type of person and every time I went to school I felt stifled and I felt like like restrained I felt like I was in bondage and I would do my work and I would do it because I felt like this is what I'm supposed to do. Every time I went to school, now mind you, I've gone to school three or four different times. Once was online, a few different universities, never finished, always wasted a bunch of money on loans and just like nothing ever came of it. Now I have to pay back loans that I never benefited from. Now I would say 
college taught me critical thinking in a lot of ways. It taught me um, a lot of the skills that I have now came from my college days. Definitely taught me a lot about myself and who I didn't want to be because I was a hot mess in college, y'all. I don't even, don't get me to telling some college stories because y'all will be like, ah, clutch my pearls, Amanda. Yes. Um, so, but I would definitely tell myself, and this is going to go into my number, um, which one was this? Number six. So I'm actually going to switch number five and number six. Choose something you're good at and stick to it. I was a dancer at one point, not a stripper, don't do me like that y'all. I was nothing wrong with stripping, I guess, I don't know, I disregard that. I was a, a professional dancer, like I danced professionally, I got paid for it and everything. I did shows, I did like uh, off, 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 off Broadway type shows, like productions. And I actually got paid for it and one of my big dreams was to move to LA and to um, pursue a dancing career, which a lot of the people that I know are doing now, which I think is awesome. Um, but yeah, that was something that I always wanted to do. But because everybody else was like, no, you need a plan B. You need to go to school. You need to go to college. You need to um, like do something that is going to give you a solid foundation. I didn't pursue any of those things. Now mind you, then I started doing makeup. As I was building my makeup career, a lot of voices, y'all know what I'm talking about, started to sway me in other directions or make me feel like this was not something that I could pursue as a long time career. And now, years later, because I listened to those voices and I started and stopped and I took a break and I went to school instead and I did this instead, I didn't make a solid decision and stick to it. I see the fruits of other people's labor, again, not trying to pay, play the comparison game, just making a point. Um, and I say to myself, dang, if I would have just known who I was, and what I wanted to do and stuck to it and just pursued that, I would be in a completely different space right now. Now, that's not regret speaking, that's wisdom. That is me taking the knowledge that I learned and applying it to my now so that my number six can really stick in my future endeavors, which is Stop listening to what everyone says and do what your heart says. Oh my gosh, if I had this, now mind you, I was a person who followed my heart. I followed my heart. Like if I wanted to pursue something, I pursued it. But in any career um, that you pursue, in any goal that you go after, you're gonna be all gung-ho in the beginning, you're gonna feel good about it. That's Trinity in the background. You're gonna feel like this is great, this is my passion, this is what I love. And then you're gonna get to a point where you don't really like this anymore. Now this isn't necessarily true for everybody, but when I would get to that point where it was like, this is not fun anymore, it's becoming work now, it's really difficult to maintain my love and my passion for it. For one, when that starts to happen, you know that you've removed God from the situation that you have you have entered into religion. Because when it becomes religious, I'm just doing this because I'm making a paycheck and I have a video about that that I will link below. Um, or I'm just doing it because I have to, that kind of thing. When, when the passion is removed from it, a lot of times you need to take a break anyway or you need to like regroup and get back on the swing of things with a refreshed mind, with a with a new perspective, because that's what will make you love it again. But when I would get to that point, I would listen to all of the voices, and y'all know I've talked about this before, when you start to feel down about something, that's why you, it's important to go to God, to get that renewal, to get that fresh perspective about how you're feeling, 
because he will pursue he will um make sure that you keep going in the in the direction that he wants you to go and keep going after your your passion and what's on your heart as opposed to a person who might say to you yeah maybe that's not for you maybe you shouldn't be pursuing that well if you're feeling that way about it girl then i don't know maybe you should take a break maybe you should break up with that guy maybe you should you know it's it's i wish that in my 20s i would have had a closer relationship with god first of all so that i would have known to go to him instead of going to people because i would always go to people with my problems and then i would listen to what they said and then I would get down about my career. I would get down on myself about my relationship. I would get down on myself about my future. And it will always lead me in the direction of giving up instead of pursuing and, and uh, enduring and going through and encouraging myself to know that I can get through this. The difficult time is only going to be for a short period and then it's going to pick up again and then I'm going to get my passion back and then, you know, whatever the case may be so that was my number six don't listen to what everyone else says do what your heart says and take those risks to to keep going to pushing you through because on the other side of that difficult circumstance is going to be growth it's going to be a lesson learned it's going to be um success it's going to be something great that comes out of you pushing through those difficult circumstances. So my number seven would be like this one is really big for me. My number seven is kids are going to redirect your path, but they are not going to ruin your life. And I have a little second part that says keep going and pursuing your goals while building a family. It's tough, but it's possible. A huge piece of advice that I would tell myself. I had kids back to back to back. I had three kids back to back. And it really took a toll on myself. It took a toll on me. You imagine having, like, first of all, you carry a child for darn near 10 months. It's almost 10 months, y'all. They tell you it's nine, but if you do the actual gestation um, timeline, 40 weeks is actually 10 months. You're pregnant for pretty much a year. So I was pregnant for pretty much three years back to back. I gained all of this weight. I completely changed. My mind completely changed. My circumstances completely changed. Like so much about me was different. To the point where I felt like my life was over <laughs> I was like this is it like this is all I'm ever gonna do I'm only ever gonna be a mom I'm never gonna pursue anything else and you know it was just like downward spiral I wish that I would have known that although kids will redirect will like your your life will do this kind of change and you're gonna have to tune in more to your children and your family and your priorities will change that does not mean as a woman that you have to give up on everything that you are pursuing for yourself um i would definitely have tailored some things but there was a lot of things that i just completely stopped doing and gave up on that i had i known better i probably would have considered pursuing maybe in a different way maybe uh less time poured into it but still continue going in some kind of way so to know that if you're building a family um yes you're gonna have to take some breaks on certain things yes it's gonna be difficult to try to balance and juggle all of your hats and all of the things that you have to do as now a mom or a wife and still pursuing a career and the things that you want to go after but it's possible the woman and this is something that april daniels told me my sister-in-law whom i love because she's always giving me such great wisdom and advice and i will also link her instagram in the description box below because y'all need to follow her and her husband they are a great example of black love and just love in general and a godly marriage and they actually live 
what they put out on Instagram. I have spent years with them, growing with them, knowing them, and they are an amazing example of just love and perseverance and endurance. And they argue and they put it out there and they make up and they love each other just as hard. And it's just, it's amazing to watch. But um, she told me once, when I was having a conversation with her about how hard it is to juggle everything, she was like, I feel like as long as a woman, as long as you can handle your responsibilities well, you should be able to pursue something for yourself at whatever level you're comfortable and not feel bad about it. If you want to um, start a business, as long as you are your house is well kept, your husband is happy, your children are, you know, well taken care of, then you should be able to do that and not feel bad about it. Now, if you are disregarding all of those responsibilities that you have first, because these are all your first ministries, to pour into your business or whatever it is that you do on the side, then that you probably need to readjust your priorities. So yeah. That was number seven. Number eight is handle your business before pleasure. In my 20s, I like to have fun. I still like to have fun. <laughs> That's just my personality. And I think many of us as human beings like to have fun. Like we like our pleasure. Let's be honest, we work hard so we can play hard, right? We like vacations, we like to relax. Me, and especially in my 20s, I probably relaxed more than I worked <laughs> and I was a hard worker in the sense that when I wanted something, I would go after it. But in the same way, if I didn't have any motivation about something, like I kind of talked about before, and I was just kind of like, eh, whatever about it, there was nothing in me that said, no, Amanda, you still have to be on top of this. You still have to um, do what you're supposed to do because in the long run, you're going to benefit from it. So if I could tell myself something in my 20s my number eight would be handle your business handle your business and then the pleasure like even if your friends are hanging out and doing what they want to do and you know you have something to take care of whether it had been homework or um even like as a dancer or as a makeup artist even putting together a dance routine that i knew i was going to have um to put together for one of the shows i would put it off i'd be like all right i know that uh crunch time can be at least 24 hours prior to the event so i can go out with my friends i can hang out a little bit more i can you know chillax a little bit and i'll work on that later no as that's why the Bible says, Solomon says, remember your creator when you're young. When you have the energy to be able to do those things, when you have the the, the know-how, and because the, the older you get, and I'm only in my 30s and I'm starting to feel it already, like you forget stuff, you're not as agile, you're not as fast, you're not as like put together as you once were. So if you remember your creator when you still have all of those things, see, we think we're going to have that stuff forever. That's why our parents be like, mm -hmm, you watch, you're going to get humbled real quick <laughs> because they know they're at an age where they don't always remember everything, where they don't always um, have the energy to do as much as they would like to do. Uh, your mind doesn't change. Your mind is still like moving at a fast pace, but your body starts to not line up with what your mind is saying so um yeah i would tell myself like handle what you what you have to handle now so that in the long run it will you know you will benefit from that so number nine would be life is going to eventually come together enjoy the process and after the sixers and our little almost to the playoffs that we made it here in Philly I would say trust the process because you have to know that even when you're following Christ Christians are so hard on themselves like I find that when I meet people who love Jesus and who are pursuing a life of following Christ we are so quick to judge ourselves so quick to condemn ourselves 
and so quick to do to agree with the enemy instead of trusting in the fact that God already had it planned out he's already got it under control and to just rest in that now mind you like I said in my 20s I didn't have a close relationship with God I was very distant from his love and I was kind of just working on what I knew you know my own thing so I would definitely tell myself in my 20s to trust God more and and I probably wouldn't have even known what that meant if somebody told me that I'd be like okay I trust him <laughs> but just to enjoy the little things in life enjoy and not be so focused on wanting more or like the celebrity life or something that could probably be attainable if I wanted it to be but is it really necessary to make me happy see we see this lifestyle and we see other people living this lifestyle and we say to ourselves man if I had that I would just be happy but a lot of times I would pursue that very thing and sometimes God will give it to you and you will get that very thing and then you'll be like this kind of sucks it sucks to maintain it it sucks to be here I don't really like it <laughs> so um yeah I would definitely tell myself to enjoy my life enjoy my portion um I like that phrase because it's like this little portion of life that God trusts you with and he gives you and he wants you to just walk in that and enjoy that enjoy what I have given to you yes you're gonna get more along the way yes it'll come with more responsibility it'll come with um more tests and trials but you're also going to enjoy more so in your 20s just know that it's all going to come together eventually <laughs> and then my number 10 i've actually mentioned a couple times already but my number 10 would definitely be girl open your bible and get to know jesus <laughs> I can't tell you the messes that I probably would have avoided if I had listened to folks who told me to get to know God more. And um, at the end of the day, everything happens for a reason. And I believe that my relationship with Christ came to a point where... It, it got so dramatic and I had such a, a dramatic encounter with him for a reason for a purpose that hasn't even manifested completely yet in my current life um, but I know it's coming because of the things that God has shown me for my future but we're talking about what we would have told our 20 year old self so if I could have given myself advice for the past I would have told myself to tune in to who God is listen to those elders who are trying to not listen to their advice and do what they say when it comes to your life but when it comes to spiritual things and when it comes to um, not so much who God is because I believe that every believer needs to learn that for themselves learn the, uh, the love of God because it will make you so much closer to him but more so listening for wisdom and listening for um just not being so rebellious you know when you're young you could be real rebellious and i was rebellious in my 20s and i laugh because it's like it's made me who i am um and i'm still very spunky i'm still that type of person um but you gotta have balance it's good to have balance in this life so that you know when to pull back you know when to move forward like God was very Jesus um, who was God manifested was very strategic about his purpose like he did the will of the father he did he was in tune with God he wasn't like I know we got radical Christians and it's cool I love it I love a, a good radical Christian I'd be like yes you better go ahead for Jesus and I have been very radical in a lot of stages of my life but when I look at the life of Jesus, he was he was radical with strategy. He was radical with 
um, with purpose. Like he wasn't just all over the place. He didn't just wake up and just and just like ah, like just blast all over the place. Like he did things with purpose. He did things with like like he wasn't playing around when he was here. He wasn't here to like like live it up with the disciples. Now mind you, I believe he had fun. He attended you know a few parties and stuff i think that with his brothers he had a good time while he was here but his ultimate focus was doing the will of god his ultimate focus was coming here for the purpose that he was brought to this earth for so if i could tell my 20 year old self anything and if i could tell you ladies anything 20s 30s um 15 however old you are watching this video it would be to stay in that space even if you're young and more importantly when you're young because your life will be so much better in the long run stay in that space where god is pouring into you so that you understand who you are to the level that he wants you to understand what your purpose is what was i put on this earth here to do now it's a process finding that out um like i said in my 30s i'm still like it's still coming to pass but I would say that I meet some young girls in this generation who are just so solid about who they are. Um, they know who God is. They know where they're going to end up. And they're very adamant about their purpose. They're very adamant about, um, you know, what it is that they want to accomplish in this life. And they're not allowing outside forces and distractions come in and pull away at that and I think that's very admirable that's very um that's something to to be proud of in the sense that you know who you are you know whose you are and nobody can take that away from you so that is it for this video I know I had I said I had um a couple bonuses but I feel like I've talked so much that the bonuses were kind of sprinkled in there so I'm gonna end it here I love you guys and I will talk to you in my next video bye